Fred Hoyle, Hoyle was one of the more interesting characters that I've gotten to explore and read about. A few notes I made of a short biography that I found on the internet. I'll go ahead and link that to the bottom of this page. He was poor in math when he first started out, and he hated going to school from the ages of five to nine. He staged his own war on it, the educational system, if you will. He hated going to it. He liked to skip out and just do whatever he wanted to do. They couldn't get him into the classes to learn things. So, in essence, he struggled with other things in school, but he eventually caught up with the help of tutors and with the help of uh, his parents, obviously. As well, he moved around a lot, going back and forth to school when he was young. He had it. He had it kind of difficult. I think his father was a machine gunner during World War One, and he had survived that by chance. And it doesn't really elaborate why he decided to be a machine gunner, being that their survival rate was really low. Regardless, people can read that. I'm going to go over some other points here because I don't have that much. Uh, time. Um, <clears throat> fast forwarding to when he was a young man, he went to the United States to because he was working on radar at the time, and I think he got involved with the atomic bomb project, and he was thinking of nuclear reactions, and th those those ideas are what brought him to the other ideas of thinking that stars were nuclear reactors that they were nuclear powered so he took a star he took his nuclear reaction um, writings and he tried to put two and two together now mind you he became very strong in math so it became a question of if he could do the math equations the right way and I don't know if that's really the correct approach but his attitude was that you could integrate equations determining the structure of a star and you know, it's it's equilibrium points, why they're so stable. He wanted to make math equations to explain why they're stable and how they could be nuclear reactors and not change that much over their lifetime. As well, in 1946, he went over the synthesis of elements from hydrogen, which was one of his important papers, if you will. I think, uh, I think Fred Hoyle's main strength had nothing to do with star science at all. I think it had to do with popularizing astronomical sciences because he went and did radio shows for people. And inside of those radio shows is when he coined the term Big Bang. And from my own experience, he forgot to add creationism at the end of that because that's exactly what it is. Fred Hoyle considered Big Bang to be ridiculous. And from now on, I'd, I'd consider Big Bang just to be, not Big Bang, but Big Bang creationism. It's not a theory. It's the belief that everything came out of nothing, essentially. So, yeah, he's one of the first popularizers, meaning it became very popular when he was on the radio show explaining a lot of these things to people. And people liked hearing about it. So, he did it. He approached star science with the with a background in mathematics, really strong background in mathematics. And I think a lot of the mainstream in the 21st century likes to do the same because that's in vogue. It's, oh, do you know the math equations? And then you have these movies where people draw up lots of equations, the blackboards and whiteboards, and, oh, they're so smart. Look at all the work they're doing. But the truth is that math is very limited. You have to actually have some physical understanding of what you're referring to. Without that, the math is just meaningless conjecture and meaningless symbols that don't actually explain anything whatsoever. And that's, I think, one of the big differences between me and Fred Hoyle. He approached the star sciences with a mathematical background. I approached it with a background in rocks, minerals, and geology. It's something I've always done since I was a child. So when I look at rocks, I'm like, how does this form in outer space? It's not a question of do I have the right math formula? It's a question of literally, how does a rock form when there's no pressure in outer space? You need pressure. So obviously, it made sense for me to look at the sky and be like, oh, where are the objects that have a lot of pressure? Stars. The stars are the objects that form large rocky bodies. 
The star is the new planet. It cools, contracts, and shrinks, combines its elements into molecules, and forms rocks and minerals. But you wouldn't know that from a math formula. <laughs> You'd really have to have a background in something else. Which leads me to my other point here. Hoyle believed that the compartmentalization, meaning if you take a science and you place it in little boxes like chemistry is over here, physics is over here, biology is over here, he didn't believe in that. He thought Mother Nature wasn't something that compartmentalized. He thought Mother Nature wasn't some, you know, thing where the social constructs of our studies mattered. He believed that if you were to study the stars, you have to include chemistry, biology, physics. It was all included because that is exactly what you're studying. It's all of it together. It's not... It's not based off social constructs and groupings. So he was really frustrated how a lot of the scientific departments, they would separate themselves. Oh, that's a chemist. He couldn't possibly understand a lot about physical stuff. Oh, the physicist guy can't possibly understand a lot of the biology stuff. So, And they place themselves in little groups. But when you deal with astronomy and astrophysics, it's like they're not, they're not separate groups. You have to include all of it. So... He was one of the people to really uh, push that ideal. And in essence, Fred Hoyle, uh, there's a lot more to learn from him. This is just a quick background. But I think what I got the most out of him is the idea that you can use your imagination and be creative when you try to solve problems that are presented to us. Uh, just doing everything by the book and not allowing yourself to think outside the box is one of the most dangerous things you can do, especially if it's a field where we don't know everything yet. We haven't seen it all. We haven't done it all. And that one of those fields is definitely in astronomy. And Hoyle showed this, I think as well, I think it was written in there that he had written science fiction, science fiction books. I think a dozen out of the 40 books he written were strictly science fiction. And uh, of course I'm going to have to find those books to see uh, to see a lot of the writings he had because usually if you write a book it can mirror your own life even if it's fiction because you take elements of your own experiences and the people you had to deal with and you put them in there whether you realize it or not. So yeah, there's Fred Hoyle. And hopefully people can learn more about this uh, man. Of course, he's he's passed away a while ago. He was born in 1915, so if he were still alive today, how old would he be? He'd be 100. Coming up soon, I think. Was his birthday in June and July? But anyways, today is June 2nd, 2015. All right, see you guys later.